Now, we're off to the races. This is brand new, uncharted territory. This is three and a half years of energy building, of pressure building. The hardest thing is to not let the bull buck you off its back. Hi, this is Mike Maloney coming to you from up on my farm, where obviously I am filming outside. So please excuse the background noise, the wind noise, the creek that is right below me, and all of the little cokey frogs that sort of chirp like birds. Uh, also, there are some lighting changes because there are some dark clouds going past every once in a while, just like the dark clouds that have been going past the precious metals markets for the past 12 years. But now the clouds are dissipating, the sun is coming out, and gold and silver are really beginning to shine. So let's get right into this. About a year ago, just shy of a year ago, March 13th, I drew this, I made this chart and then drew this configuration. I had already done this uh, like a year before uh, when, it, when it created this little piece of what is a handle on a cup and handle or a pan and handle, depending on the duration of the chart. If it's a shorter duration, it stretches out the uh, thing and it looks more like a pan and handle. Either way, it is a very, very bullish sign. And then gold put in a double top and it bounced off of it, but then it went back up and about a month later, it put in a triple top. And I notified all my insiders on that. I think I presented it a couple weeks later in a video on the YouTube channel. And, um, and I said that it was a very, very bullish sign. And people were correcting me, saying, no, a triple top is a bearish sign. If it can't get through that resistance in three tries, it's going down. But I had complete confidence that this was an incredibly bullish sign because the destiny of precious metals is basically that the world's central banks will never stop printing currency. And that means that real assets, especially real money, have to be priced far, far higher in their enslaving fiat currency. So uh, this was the pattern a year ago. And when it went up and it made that triple top, I said it was bullish, but it bounced off of it. And I said, this is going to form an inverse head and shoulders. And then it's going to break through on its fourth attempt. So, you know, the reason I said that is because I just was absolutely confident that the Federal Reserve was, is going to continue destroying the value of the currency and gold and, sh and silver are going to be the big beneficiaries of this. So uh, I want to cover a few charts here. The last time that there was a big inverse head and shoulders was during the crisis of 2008. We had, uh, you know, uh, Bear, St uh, Bear Stearns, I think it was here, and a big pullback. And then there was uh, Lehman and Washington Mutual and a big pullback. And we didn't really make a triple top. These weren't uh, equal. But um, then an another shoulder, and it didn't bust through. This was 17 or 18 months for this inverse head and shoulders to, uh, to form. And if you look before that inverse head and shoulders, there was no big uh, cup and handle. There was nothing real bullish before it. And then what did it result in? It resulted in this huge move up to 1900 bucks from down near 700 bucks, low 700, you know, the, the um, let me zoom up on this again. From down in the low 700s, right about 700 bucks, all the way to 1900 in a very short, uh, you know, just a couple of years here, it hit 1900. Well, where are we today? Let's take a look at this in entire century here. And uh, this is the cup and the handle. And we had a triple top and we have pierced that triple top now. And so let's see what a couple of other analysts are looking at as well. Uh, so this is Valerian and he says, we broke the trend line of these 13 years. People are calling for a pullback already. Nobody believes it. Uh, miners worst in 40 years and you, and you care about a $20 pullback. And so um, this was drawn several days ago. And what you see here is that 
these, each one of these bars is a month. And in late 2023, gold pierced this trend line. Now, this trend line is based on the close of the price action each day. These lines that stick above it are um, each month. I'm sorry. This is a monthly chart. So uh, this is the intra-month price action. And so he's drawing it across the close. And since December, this has been support. And it has held very, very well here. And now we're up here. Now somebody else, this is from Gold Ventures. The other one was Valerian. Uh, gold at the last resistance. Now this chart, I believe, is from yesterday. I'm filming this on Thursday the 7th in the evening. You're going to be watching it on Friday. I have a feeling Friday or Monday gold will do a little bit of pullback, and I'll show you why uh, coming up next. But uh, he draws it. Uh, th this one is also uh, monthly data, I believe. Yes, this would be monthly data or maybe it's weekly, one month. Um, and uh, so he's drawing it uh, on the intra-month uh, lines here. So he's taking in the full price action of gold. And it was up against that, but that was yesterday. That was uh, 2156. Well, today we blew through that. So now we're off to the races. This is brand new, uncharted territory. Let's take a look at uh, some live charts now. This is um, Yahoo Finance. This is a one month chart and uh, 2167.70. And so you can see that we've been uh, higher than 2168 today. I just want to show you here that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up days in a row. And that's big, and that means that it's this, this uh, short-term rally here is getting a little old in the tooth. Uh, it would be good for us to pull back and test some resistances. And so I think Friday, Monday, Tuesday at the latest, we will see a down day or two. And all it takes is just the slightest amount of good news among the sea of bad news, these oceans of bad news that we have had. But uh, let's take a look at this on a three-month chart. And in just the last three weeks since February, we've rallied by, we're up about 9%. We're up uh, since, uh, here's a six month chart, and we're, we are up about 20% um, uh, from here. And then if we go to a two year chart, you can see the head of that inverse head and shoulders. And we are up uh, about a third, 33% from uh, back there just a year and a half ago. Now that head and shoulders was, um, this is, like three and a half years long. The one back in 2008 during the global financial crisis was only 18 months. This is three and a half years of energy building, of pressure building. But anyway, let's go back to the three month chart here because I want to show you the magnitude of this move is better shown as a line versus candlesticks. And you go, whoa, <laughs> that is one heck of a move. Uh, moving on, uh, you know, gold and silver have been the best performing assets of this century. So since the turn of the century, gold is up, you know, we're, this is in 50% increments. So 500%, 550%, 600%, 650%. Well, the S&P is up 250%. So gold is up 650%. You know, I've been investing in it since right there, October of 2002 is when I started buying gold. I didn't find out about silver until um, April, March or April of 2003 when I visited a man named Jim Poplava of FinancialSense.com and uh, he got me into some precious metal stocks and got me uh, heavily into silver. And, um, and one of the things that he said in one of his uh, podcasts was the hardest thing is to not let the bull buck you off its back. In a bull market, there are always going to be, I mean, people said the, the gold bull market was dead when it, during this pullback right here. 
uh, it broke a trend line uh, right here. There was a perfect trend line under it. It broke that trend line in 2005. Oh my God, the gold bull market is dead. And I hear, I've heard this over and over again. Then the global financial crisis. And then the, you know, this was a painful pullback. This was just a correction in a long-term rally. I do not consider this a bear market and this a different bull market. This is a long-term uh, bull market in precious metals, and it is caused by fundamental undervaluation compared to the currency supply. So gold and silver have been the best performing assets other than uh, mo uh, other than a lot of cryptos, but cryptos you're starting at zero, and so uh, a, a one percent in <laughs> there is no such thing as a one percent increase when you start at zero. Every increase is an infinite increase when you're starting at zero. So, in the Financial Times, this is one of the few uh, m mass media outlets that actually recognized. Uh, gold as being something that is really performing and here they published a 20-year chart and it's their chart of the day gold glitters and you can see the triple top and that we busted through it and it's now off to the races it's probably that slingshot move that I've been talking about uh, golden toilet <laughs> posts that uh, uh, gold just hit 2165 silently in my circle of friends, they know me as a gold and silver investor. Zero texts, zero calls. So it isn't, still isn't getting on people's radar yet. Uh, but it will. Believe me, it will. Uh, Jim Bianco from Bianco Research. Uh, gold spot price climbs to a record. The price is in orange. Cumulative flows for all 10 gold ETFs is in blue. This is the biggest divergence in 20 years of trading. Uh, and so this is the inflows and outflows of ounces of gold into the ETFs and out of the ETFs. And what you see here is this big divergence that started in uh, late 2022 or mid-2022 and uh, this huge divergence and it continues to this day and it coincides with the peak of that inverse head of the inverse head and shoulders. So, you know, hang, hang a head and shoulders upside down here. You've got your triple top, and we've broken through the triple top, setting new records, and yet there are outflows from the ETFs. How is this possible? Well, all of these ETFs that are counted in this aggregate of these 10 ETFs, these are uh, Western ETFs. And so Peter Spina points out, Peter Spina of, uh, of Goldseek, uh, he points out that gold just hit another record high. Uh, but the thing to watch is the uh, Swiss exports to China. So we'll have this data soon uh, from Nick Laird of Gold Charts R Us. Uh, but the Swiss exports to China are usually a good proxy for demand for gold, Chinese demand for gold. They nearly tripled, tripled in January as consumers sought a hedge against turmoil in the country's stock market and property sector. And boy, they have. Marin Katusa of Katusa Research uh, posted this. Gold, the gold pressure cooker has started in China. Reports of massive lineups to buy physical gold. And down here, 800,000 Chinese rushed to buy gold in malls at New Year with worsening political economic environment. And yes, it is getting worse there, but 800,000, that's 80% of a million people rushing, and these are consumers rushing to buy this at malls. These aren't traders on exchanges. And right now there's been a big divergence of the spot price of gold and silver uh, in the West and in the East. In the Chinese, in the Shanghai exchange, they're paying a significant premium. So I want to go back to something that I, I want to show you part of a presentation I made in November. So in November, I made a presentation sort of continuing on with all of the bullish patterns that had formed. And you can see here, the last time we put in an inverse head and shoulders, and then we broke it, and we're, we went from 700 uh, down to actually below 700 on this chart. This is stock charts, all the way up to 1900. And uh, 
Uh, so huge move. And uh, then we put in the pan and handle or a cup and handle and it had not yet broken that line as soon as this started a pullback. I told my insiders that this is making an inverse head and shoulders and it did. So I pointed out the pan and handle. You can see it there and pretty clearly we got a pan and handle going on. Uh, we have a triple top and when it busts through that triple top it's going to lead to a slingshot move I said and then we had this inverse head and shoulders building and when it busts through that resistance of the triple top slingshot move and we are just you know we're, we're only since the bottom of this shoulder we're only up by nine percent so this slingshot move has uh, barely begun we're up here somewhere right now hi i just wanted to take a moment and thank you for subscribing and mention that if you'd like to help our channel please consider my company goldsilver.com the next time you buy precious metals we're one of the most trusted names in the industry. Our prices are sharp, delivery is fast, and we have an insider's program where you find out exactly what I'm doing with my own investments. Thanks for making goldsilver.com your dealer. And now back to the video. And so this is, I mean, <clears throat> if you have been, I don't give advice. I tell people what I do. Uh, right now, I'm uh, a little bit I, I usually stay fully invested, and I've been making large expenditures up here on the farm. Uh, I have a very large precious metals position, and so uh, if I had extra cash at this moment, I would be buying more at this moment, because I think over the next year, <laughs> and or two years, you're going to see some real fireworks happening. I just, I don't understand why gold is below $5,000, let alone $3,000. And so this slingshot move is coming. Why? Well, you already saw China, but take a look at this. So, uh, 1980 versus today. Now, in 19, from 1971 to 1980, gold went up 25 times its original price. Silver went up 36 times its original price from, 19, uh, from 1971 to January of 1980. That was the big move. But in 1980, when it peaked, at 873 was uh, the uh, intraday on the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. When it peaked at 873, so it went from 35 bucks to 873. Um, from uh, 1971, August 15th, 1971, to January 1980. The differences between 1980 and today are there are 18 times more people who, can, who have access to being able to buy gold or can legally buy gold. Most of the world, it was illegal back in the 70s. And today there are 18 times more people who can legally access and buy gold and silver. There's 55 times more currency on the planet. <laughs> I mean, that suggests that the peak could possibly be like 55 times higher than it was back then, but uh, there's there's other reasons why that is a little bit um, uh, uh, crazy. But there's 56 times more millionaires than there was back then. There are 200 times more billionaires than in 1980. There's 220 times more consumer credit available for people to purchase precious metals on their credit cards. And so that is the big story about the move that has just started. This is by no means the end. The sun is finally shining for gold and silver. And I want to thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.